Hi, I'm Laura Zam, and this is Sexual Healing Central. Today, I am interviewing Rachel Kramer Bussell, who is the editor of Best Women's Erotica of the Year, Volume 6. And she is going to share with us tips for how we can use erotica to help us with our pleasure and also our healing. Thank you for having me. Welcome, Rachel. I'm so happy to have you here. This is such a such a treat. Okay, so how can three tips, how can erotica be used for pleasure and healing? Okay. This, well, sorry, this is how can pleasure, how can erotica be used for pleasure and healing for people of all genders? Okay, well, I have a couple things, a couple ways that people would be interacting with erotica. One is reading, which is probably I guess I would say the most common, but I don't know for sure. But I think reading erotica, whether you're reading it by yourself or you're reading it with a partner, or, you know, and with a partner could mean physically like reading it out loud to each other, but it could also mean one of you reads it and then leaves it for the other and says, read this, you know, I like this um, or what, you know, and then you'd meet and discuss it. Um, I think the written word can really let your imagination and take over. And it's not that you're always going to picture yourself in the scenarios, but it, it it's very open in terms of how people um, process it, you know, in, in a way that I think is a little bit different from watching some watching a video, which is not to knock videos or porn, but I think there, there's only one type of uh, image you're being shown with erotica, you you have more freedom to let your imagination picture it how you want to picture it and maybe continue the story. You know, maybe the story ends, but in your mind it continues, or maybe it sparks something that you had never thought of. Like for me, especially when I was reading erotica before I started writing it, it just really unlocked a lot of possibilities of what what sex could be like what could be erotic, um, what settings sex could happen in, and the types of people that, for, for me, the types of people that I was attracted to. So I think reading erotica, either alone or with a partner in some way, um, I think it just can be eye-opening, you know, not necessarily that it's going to fix your life or, or solve um, something, but I think that can be healing, especially just on a more basic level to know that there's so many different kinds of desire and ways that can play out. Um, you know, I think, I think if you read erotica widely or, you know, or read, you know, maybe, maybe not reading one, maybe reading one novel or book or anthology, but if you, if you read it, you know, over time, especially, I think you're, you will learn about things that you had never thought of because, you know, I, most people will, because I think most of us, our sex, knowledge of sex is limited to like the things we've done or the things we've heard about from friends or maybe seen on TV or movies. So I think reading erotica can just open your mind, which that could lead to who knows what. And I, I think that opening your mind and being made aware of different types of sexual desires and sex toys and fantasies and ways of getting pleasure, I think that does circle back to you and, and how you do all those things. Sure. You know, so, I mean, it, it could, it could have a very powerful impact. Like it could be, oh, I discovered this thing that I want to try that I never thought of, but I think it could just be a more um, general sense of okay, there's more out there in the world of sex than I ever thought of. Whether or not I want to do that, just- Whether think, or not you want to do it, yeah. right, right. I think knowing that is helpful. I think knowing that can just give you a different perspective, which you, you never know when that will, um, what role that will play in your life. Beautiful. What's the, what's the next tip? Um, I think the other, this is also about kind of- uh, receiving erotica but is listening to erotica I think can also do a lot of the things I just said but I think especially for couples listening to erotica together can be really um 
a, a way to bond over it. And and because you know you're both using your imaginations, but then you're you don't have to hold a book or or look at anything. You're you're you can listen to it and maybe touch each other or just be in bed together and and sort of I think there's something so sensual about the human voice, um, you know, especially people who are narrating erotica. That I think can really hit you differently than than if you were reading it out loud or silently. So I think listening to erotica, or or maybe you're alone or together, closing your eyes and just picturing what what the person is is reading, and so you know you might be following along the same way you would any kind of audio book or podcast. But I think also with erotica, you might just be in it more for the sense of the mood it's creating. Mm -hmm. And then incorporating that mood into your own life. So I think especially for um, couples or people in relationships who are maybe in a rut or who are, you know, just looking for something new to try but aren't sure what they want to try, listening to erotica together can be um, just a new thing to try and, and see what see what effect it has on you. Excellent. And are there any other ways that? Uh, well, yeah. So because I'm so, I'm such a, I'm a writer first, like my mind in most areas of my life, like if something happens to me, I'm, I'm thinking, how can I write about this? Now, I know not everyone is this way, but I do think that either exploring writing erotica or just looking around you at your settings, whether that's your house, which most of us are in our houses for much or all of the time these days, or <laughs> or looking at you know your community around you, um, and thinking about okay, what's erotic about this space or this mm. um, situation I'm in, or and it does, that doesn't mean that you're going to get turned on and in, in every encounter you have in your daily life, but I think thinking about how can I eroticize this, what like what could I make sexy about this situation? And that could be something as kind of every day as going to the grocery store or waiting online at the post office. And maybe you're not doing those things right now, but you know, everyday things that you used to do, like sitting in traffic or um, you know, at your desk waiting for your computer to update and eavesdropping on a coworker or something like that, or or just looking around your house and thinking about, okay, like you know, would I set an erotica story, if I was going to set an erotica story in my kitchen, what would happen? Mm -hmm. And I think, A, that's fun, because you're, you're looking around in a new way. Uh -huh. And I think it, it, that can unlock a creative side that you might not think you have. But that I think, I think if you want to, and anyone can write erotica, like a lot of people say to me, but I don't know what to write about, or I haven't had this wild and crazy sex life. I don't know what to write. That's okay. Like, you know, you can, first of all, you can use Google and, you know, research something that you might be interested in, but also your characters can be normal everyday people. Mm -hmm. You know, they can be like you or or not like you, but they don't have to have super over the top lives. Um, I think it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. It can be about what's erotic about this moment, you know, and, and I think any moment could have erotic elements. I mean, maybe someone's, you know, bad at cooking and is burning dinner in the kitchen and they're like worried that their partner is going to get angry. But then, you know, instead of being angry, they you know, turn off the oven and, and like have sex on the kitchen floor and then <laughs> eat something with their fingers or, or like feed each other or whatever. Yeah. I don't know, something like that. So, you know, I think looking around your home or mm. familiar settings and thinking about, okay, like what, what would I picture about people being intimate in this space? I'm not saying it's easy. It's not, you know, you're, you might, you might draw a blank on some of them, but I think mm -hmm. if you do this repeatedly, you will find ways to eroticize um, just elements of your daily life. And I think that can be a powerful um, tool to self-discovery and to healing. And to healing. And, yeah, you know, I think and it's, I think, it's, yeah, sorry. I think you can write it. You know, I think sometimes people think, oh, well, erotica means I'm eroticizing things that 
that might not be, that I might not know how to eroticize in real life. Like um, I've been thinking about like with your book, like painful sex, like how do you, how do you eroticize that? But I think it, if you wanted to, not that everyone wants to do this, but let's say that was something that someone wanted to write about. I think, I think there's so much potential in how do people talk about sex among each other and how do they overcome problems and issues and how do they find alternatives to sexuality than, than what they thought sex was going to be. I mean, I think there's so many ways to, um, to approach that from an erotic mindset. So I think writing erotica, and, and also when I say writing, that doesn't mean writing for public consumption. You could be writing in your own notebook or computer. You never have to show it to anyone. I think that's still a, a very valuable exercise, you know, or maybe, um, you know, you, you have an aspect of your body that you don't feel comfortable with. Like maybe you force yourself to write about a, a lover who's like obsessed with that body part and who, who mm -hmm. wants to, touch it and stroke it and and you know make that a central focus and you know I think I think there's so many ways that writing can be healing um and especially and writing erotica can be healing because you're in control you anything can happen you can you know you can make characters who who are like the people you would want to encounter in real life and maybe you already have that person in your life, or maybe you're single and you don't have that person in your life, or you have a partner, but they're not meeting your needs. I think writing erotica and in that way, like bringing those fantasies to the page can be very powerful because it, it again might unlock something for you that you hadn't thought of before. And I know I've certainly sat down to write erotica and written about things that if you had just asked me, are you into that? I would say no, but it came from somewhere. Like, I don't know where it came from. And I, and I don't think you have to know. I think sometimes people feel like, oh, well, if I wrote this, it means this about me. Mm -hmm. And it, it really, it might mean something about you, but it might just mean that you had this fantasy that popped into your head that you wanted to explore. And then what you do with that is up to you. You know, you could keep it on your computer or in your notebook, or you could, you know, share it with a partner or you could publish it, you know, that what you do next is, I think, the next step. But I think giving yourself, giving yourself free reign to write whatever comes to mind and not mm -hmm. censoring it um, can be really powerful because it can help you um, just tap into a side of yourself that you might not tap into otherwise. Because otherwise, yeah. I do yeah. think, I do think that you like I said before, you don't always know what you're going to write about or what's mm -hmm. going to come to mind, mm -hmm. especially when you get in that state of like feeling free to write whatever you want. Um, right. Right. And I think that can be very eye-opening and powerful and, and healing on many levels. Yeah, beautiful. This is so, so, so this has been so powerful. I, I love these three tips. Thank you so much, Rachel, for for sharing them with our listeners and our viewers. And I hope that people will pick up the book and all the information will be right, right here in the show notes so that you can find the links. And uh, thank you so much for, for being with us and, and sharing all this. Mm -hmm.